So there you go. A very, very, very good insight there into mm-hmm. kind of the scope of Permian Basin. And I think that's in this region, genuinely, what makes this so fun is you have all the way from 6A to 1A Division Two. There are not many places right. across this state that you really get it. And I'm not talking about, oh, it's all 6A teams and then they have all these little surrounding areas of 1A teams. I mean, right. you're legitimately getting almost everything from you're not getting any 5A, but there's 4A, 3A, 2A, 1A. Like, I mean, everything other than 5A is out there. And that it adds for the diversity of being able to talk about so many different types of teams. Right. And typically like you've got good teams in each classification too. So they're not just like duds, you know what I right. mean? Like there, there's good talent in every single classification out there. Right. And especially being over there in region one with all of them, there's opportunity for those six, eight teams that you might say, well, Hey, none of them are ranked. When you get into region one, it starts helping in the playoff scope of the likelihood of you being able to make a run is pretty decent. Right. Two and three, region two and region three tend to be those kind of power nexuses. So it helps, even if they're not ranked. They can get on a run and teams that get hot in the playoffs and they're teams that have done it before and they're teams that have the pedigree, like you said, all the championships and everything like that. So of those teams, let's go ahead and take a look at which teams we have ranked in the DCTF um, slash Associated Press official rankings of note. And we're going to start... In 2A Division 2, we talked to Kaler about that, yeah. but the Wink Wildcats, they are 2-0. and um, They have just, I mean, they have a commanding offense, head coach Brian Gibson, and then uh, his son, quarterback, Cannon Gibson. They're a high-flying offense. They've got a mm-hmm. defense that has figured it out. We have very, very high hopes for the Wink Wildcats, and so they will start off the ranking. And then you, there it is, 7-1A Division 1 it, it, we will definitely talk about this more, so I'm not going to sit here and do it right now. But number four, Garden City. Number five, the Red Devils of Rankin. And number six, the Coyotes of Borden County. Again, we'll get into that in just a little bit. Then moving on to our final classification that has ranked teams in it. And that is... Sorry. No, you're good. 1A Division 2. And there's two different ones. The... Balmeray Bears, led by legendary six-man head coach Vance Jones, come in at number three. And then coming in at number eight, it is the Cougars of La Mesa Klondike. So we will talk a little bit about them. I want to point out, too, we are uh, – we were real big on Klondike last year. So they have Dalton yeah. Graffenreid as their head coach, which if you're not young. familiar with who that is, <laughs> incredibly young. Like, I think that he – Isn't he – didn't he I think he's my age. Break- Honestly. Oh, I thought he was a little bit older than that. But maybe he is. I don't remember. Like, I think maybe like 27? late 20s, yeah. early, early, like maybe 30 or something like that. But yeah, he's he's young. Yeah, he's very young. Successful. And it's his alma mater. So they made it all the way to the, uh, I think it was the area finals last year. I have this pulled up somewhere. Let's see. 1A. Yeah, they went pretty deep. Last I'm year, gonna make sure that I, I remember, get this right. I remember talking. They went to all the him. way to the state semifinals. That's okay. right. They lost to gotcha. eventual state runner-up Motley County in the, the 1A Division Two because Motley County played Strawn. Motley County coming in as the heavy favorites. We yeah. thought in Strawn uh, had that that guy Grayson Rigdon that absolutely popped off as a freshman and ended up winning that. Um, but yeah, it's funny because Klondike and Balmeray both fell to Motley County. Balmeray falling in the area round. They hit them a much earlier, obviously, Region 2 versus Region 1. But Klondike is a team that we have had our eyes on. Yeah. They really put a target on their back last year. I'll be interested to see how they perform now with that target on their back. Yeah, I remember talking to him at coaching school back in 2021, I believe, my first coaching mm-hmm. school. And that was, like, when he was taking over the program. And he seemed really high on them back then. So, yep. like – just to see them do so well, you know, it's kind of cool to see. Very, very cool to see. So there are the <clears throat> current state ranked teams. Remember, we only do top 10 when we were doing preseason stuff. We had a little bit more leniency there, but now we've cut it since we're in season just to the top 10. So some still plenty of teams to be ranked in the top 10, specifically, obviously, looking yeah. at that lower classification. But now let's go ahead and throw it over to the coordinator of Vibes, and uh, we'll go through the players to watch in the Permian Basin region. And like I mentioned earlier, there are there's a lot of really good quarterbacks in here. So a lot of these guys, of course, like they when we start getting down to the lower classifications, they start playing both ways, but their main kind of gig is quarterback. So we'll go ahead and start off with <coughs> Odessa Permian offensive lineman Harris 
Sewell, he's on our 6A preseason All-State team, rightfully so. This mm-hmm. man stands at 6'4", weighing 300 pounds. No, call him That's out. <laughs> call him out. Okay, all right, fine. Not so, him, but the, the y- yes, site. <laughs> yes, So uh, Rivals had him listed at 299 pounds, which that I think is mean. just doing him dirty. <laughs> like, that, that's 300 pounds. You're not going to round down to 299. Like, this man's <laughs> over 300, I'm sure. He could now, eat, like, a donut, and we would be there, exactly. you know? He's going to put on weight like nobody's business. He's just got to, like, eat an extra meal someday. But, yeah, this dude absolutely is a beast. He's just a bully. Uh, up front, he's he's a guard for the anchors. Uh, oh my God, I cannot talk today. He's a, he definitely anchors that Panthers offensive line and just really a big bully up front. He's what's super interesting about him is that he his main gig he's a he's a he's a guard mm-hmm. right, but he also can line up at center, hmm. so he can also snap the ball, which makes him super versatile. Yeah, you know, and he's also. Um, He's got offers from everywhere. He had offers from Texas A&M, Alabama, Arkansas, Auburn, but he ultimately committed to Clemson back in May. So mm-hmm. rightfully so, he's. I was gonna say his top five were Clemson, A&M, yeah. Texas, OU, and Alabama. If that's not the most like elite list of elite, then I don't I don't know how you can get better than that. But it's funny because we talked about it a lot, and we'll keep kind of hashing this out. But like when you, I feel like everyone's judgment of the Permian Basin is Friday Night Lights just because yes. that's that's what people get like this is picture perfect if you were trying to convince someone like oh Friday Night Lights like <laughs> Harris Sewell is who you put in front that's- of them and say yeah like this kid you know exactly and also I wanted to point out too they're able to run the ball obviously a lot better right now because with him being up front and kind mm-hmm. of like the tone setter of their um their run game you put any running back back there you put any quarterback you can turn any any quarterback into a dual threat quarterback because he's just going to block for you the whole mm-hmm. way, you know? So that's some, that's really nice having that 300 pound offensive lineman up front. Oh yeah. He's a stud. Exactly. Moving on down to, we've already talked about him. Andrew's quarterback, Ashton Galvin. If you are just now joining us, we, we thought that the starting quarterback for this Andrew's squad was going to be EJ Lopez, um, a true pro style quarterback. But this past week, um, Ashton Galvin actually took the starting job over EJ Lopez uh, in their big win against Monahans last week. This dude is actually a really true dual threat quarterback. Last week he had 16 carries for 115 yards and a touchdown and almost threw a perfect game. He went 13 for 14, 213 yards and five touchdowns through the air. And when we were talking to uh, Caitlin earlier, she said that while talking to Andrew's head coach that I think that they're going to go with more of a dual style quarterback play here, Mm -hmm. but I wouldn't be surprised if if ultimately they decide to go with Ashton Galvin for the rest of the season. Yeah. I mean, to come in and to take everybody by surprise like that, that's got to be something that the coaches had in their back pocket knowing, Hey man, he'll, we'll, we'll give him a shot and see what he does with it. And if he doesn't, then we stick with old faithful, but to go out there in your first performance when everyone else assume, even that was the thing for us, we assumed, but for the local media to assume up to game time that it was going to be someone else. I mean, that's a complete testament to the collectiveness and like the calmness mm-hmm. of this this kid. But I mean, what a what a thing. And yeah, it'll be very interesting to see how that ends up shaping out for Andrews cuz like she said, I think that's a team that, you know, they're they're going to rep for class 4A yep. when it comes to the Permian Basin. So it'll be very interesting to see if they continue with the fluid quarterback system or if they dial it back and say, "No, this is this, this is, is our, our guy." guy. Yeah. So, it'll be interesting. Let's move on down to small school. Kermit running back Nate Gensler, who is also the son of head coach Nate Gensler. I was going to say, when it didn't happen, <laughs> like that threw me off. For, I literally looked it up on my computer because I saw that and I was like, We all talked oh, about TFT no, did back she, in March. Yeah, I was so. like, did she, accidentally, uh, did she accidentally put the coach's name? And I was like, oh, crap. No, nope. duh. <laughs> nope, nope. That's his son. I Maybe it didn't say junior on there. I would have put junior. Junior, but I yeah. Guess, yeah, that is Nate Gensler Jr. It's the, the Spider-Man back, meme. The- They're just pointing at each other. <laughs> Other. Literally, same guy. Uh, he's on our 3A preseason All-State team, standing at 5'11", 200 pounds. He's a big big running back. He actually came over from Lubbock Roosevelt. Mm-hmm. Him and his dad came over from Lubbock Roosevelt. Which you'll remember from having an unbelievable run last year yes. in, in 3A. They, I mean, they went all the way down to it was Sock. They played Sock. Yeah, yeah. So and I guess that was 5A. Yeah, this guy was uh, that ma- their main reason for having such a phenomenal run last year. He was just stellar at Roosevelt, earning co-district MVP honors, putting up 
uh, 1,400 rushing yards and 20 touchdowns. And when you watch him on film, it looks like he's covered in butter because he just slips <laughs> past through uh, defenders and he gets through these tiny little holes and he's able to find the end zone super, super easily. Well, and the good thing for for Ginsler is the fact that, yes, one, he's an unbelievably talented running back, but Kermit came back with a really good defensive line this year. So you yeah. pair the two of them up together. And obviously, Coach Ginsler is something someone that knows a little something about offense, as you remember uh -huh. Lubbock Roosevelt's high-flying offense yes, last year. Yes. So that's a... That's a perfect storm there for, for Kermit, which, again, should be the Frogs. Yep. I know. I, that's, that's a missed opportunity. I'm going to write a letter. <laughs> I'm going to write. Expressing my feelings. I'll get Jen Tepper to hop on it with me. <laughs> Let's move down to Wink quarterback and also defensive back Cannon Gibson. We mentioned him earlier. He's on our 2A preseason All-State team, but as a defensive back, uh, he also plays quarterback as well. Um like we mentioned earlier, this is a wink squad that's ranked fifth in 2A Division II. This guy, probably one of those main reasons why they ranked so high. He has played a major role in their success. He's just one of those guys that's super dynamic uh, on both sides of the ball. He's listed as a dual-threat quarterback who can pass accurately through little, little tight windows, um, also while on the run. Um, and he's just got a knack for detail, I mm -hmm. think, which makes him good at defensive back as well. Oh, and that's – that's It translates well. It absolutely does, and that's the entire key. A coach's kid that's leading the offense, leading the defense, that has a knack for detail. Like, it's – it right. is what it is like there's a that's really no surprise but he's been exceptional I also think he has really good size for uh yeah. you know for a 2A quarterback to have 6'1 190 I mean that's that's a stout that's a stout quarterback yeah yeah well and speaking of good size let's move down to our ranking quarterback and linebacker Blake Wise he is our district 7-1A division one preseason defensive MVPs listed um, as a linebacker on there but he's also a quarterback he stands at 6'3 Six at the three. 1A level? No wonder they're good. pounds senior. <laughs> now, if you got a quarterback coming in standing at 6'3", 190, mm -hmm. if I'm coach, I'm saying, heck, put him at a linebacker too. Yeah. <laughs> put him right <laughs> in the middle. Just line him, him right up, in boy. <laughs> put him right in the middle. Um, yeah, when you've got that kind of size, man, at the 1A level, you're putting him anywhere that you can on the field. You're, you're letting him play both sides of the ball. He played varsity uh, football for three seasons, actually – um, at that quarterback position. So he's learned that system really, really well and just kind of fits comfortably on both sides of the ball. Yeah, and they uh, they lost a lot to graduation last year. So yeah. he's been a big, like, leadership factor for them, too, along with that size. Yeah, man, that at that point, you're just hoping that you have a receiver that can break away fast enough yep. for him to just literally look over every single defensive line at 6'3 and go, boop. I'm going to put that right in the pocket. <laughs> yeah, if I'm, a, if I'm a quarterback and I see – Blake Wise, right over the middle there. I'm a, I'm good. I, I'm good. I'm, you know, good. I think I'm. I'm taking the sack. <laughs> nah. I, you know <laughs> what? On second away. thought, I'm, I'm gonna throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> Last up on our list, we've got Bal Murray, running back Thomas Contreras. I want to give a shout out to Bal Murray too uh -huh. because um, they make it very easy to find individual player statistics because oh, I yeah. found his stats super easily for each game this season. Which is not something that typically happens no. when you get into the lower classifications. No, not at all. But this guy's on our 1A preseason All-State team. And if you remember, you throw it all the way back to 2020 when Balmoray played Richland Springs in the 1A division. Help me out here. Uh, division two. Two state championship. Thank Which you. was funny because that was the uh, that was the game that was played in San Angelo, yes, the state championship because game, because it was. Yep. Yes. Yes. Um, if you throw it back all the way to 2020. This guy was the story of that game. He really led that team to a win. Four touchdowns in that game. And, of course, he returns for his senior season. Already has 457 rushing yards and seven touchdowns only through two games this season, which is freaking amazing. He really showed out in their win over Van Horn last week. 35 carries for 289 yards and four touchdowns, one of which being a 71-yard touchdown on the ground. That's yeah, crazy. oh yeah. This is this is a well-known name, I don't think, just around that part of the world. I think it's a well-known name around any part of six-man football. I think um, so too. Even, even better than that. I mean, even kind of bigger than that. But yeah, he is. He is. He's a lot of times we talk about needing that one guy. He is that he is one that guy, guy, but then Balmurray also has the supporting cast to back him up. But mm -hmm. yeah, uh, he's unbelievable. So there you go. There's your players to watch. 
in the Permian Basin region. A lot of really good quarterback play. Um, I always like regions that have a really good quarterback play because I think – Oh, yeah, it's, it's exciting. It's exciting, you know, and especially when you got a lot of, like, pro-style quarterbacks like that and they can throw really well. I think it's super interesting. It absolutely is. Let's round this all out with a couple of storylines to follow, and we will start off with – the one that we told you that we were going to wait to talk about, and I think I called it District of Destruction. Is that what I'm... Yeah, District of Mass, mass destruction. destruction. Not just Perfect Destruction. Perfect name. It's Mass, mass destruction. destruction. And it's funny because when you think Mass Destruction, you think Mass. You think large. We're talking about very, very small teams here, so we want to go back to it. Let's talk about District 7, 1A, Division 2. You have number 4, 5, and 6 all in the same thing, and this was a district that really caught our eye when realignment rolled around because I believe Garden City was in the district, but ranking got dropped in there and Borden County got dropped in there, and that's really big because Borden County has a 14-year streak of winning district yeah. championships, and you want to take a look at the rest of their schedule. They're all 2-0. and None of them have played each other. Rankin in week one really caught our eye because they had a 53-30 to 30 win over Balmeray. And as we said, Balmeray is 1A Division two, so it is a big classification jump, especially at that level. You're yeah. talking the difference between having 15 kids to the difference of having eight or nine kids sometimes. You yeah. know, so that is – I mean, that's big. But a – to go out there and beat them by 23, that really caught our eye. So Rankin is is definitely on there. Borden County, um, they have played Lubbock Kingdom Prep. They beat them. They completely whooped Meadow last week. But they've got to get through Claude, Rotan, Abbott. Shout out Coach Crawford. Um, Garden City and Rankin. That's all still left on their schedule. So it's not just those two teams. The other two, it's basically just those two teams, those yeah. two district yeah. games that really should cause any bit of a ruckus. But, I mean, they're taking on Abbott. That's that's a state-ranked contender, right. you know. Um, so that will be very interesting. But that is absolutely one of the most fun districts to keep an eye on, regardless of classification. That's a power yeah. nexus to have four, five, and six in the entire classification, all in one district, especially with realignment. So yeah. we're not just going to get this fireworks factory this year. We'll get it next year, too. I think every time that we have done a storyline like this on WTF, I think the most that we've had in a single district were two ranked teams. Mm -hmm. I don't think we've seen a district yet with three ranked teams. A single district. Right. So this is... This is unbelievably impressive. Well, and it's crazy to me because it's not like it's number one and then like ten. nine and ten. Yeah. You know, it's not like one and then ten and then, oh, 15, but they're like right there. You know, I'm right. talking four, four five, six. six <laughs> like, right there. <laughs> Which makes it harder come playoff time because they're all going to probably beat each other. Exactly. Oh, know? yeah. No, it's just going to be a tussling match out there yeah. in the Permian Basin and we're going to be sitting there looking at the rankings going <laughs> <It's fine>. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do, do now <laughs> you know um, so anyway definitely keep an eye on that if you're a big school snob write it off but we're telling you that's fun yeah um, and then lastly what we want to talk about and I'm also proud of this the glory days is it a thing of the past or is it the future We've we've hit the nail on the head a lot here, and you you can't talk about the Permian Basin without doing this. You'll remember it was you know Midland Legacy, formerly Midland Lee. They they had their run. Yeah. Odessa Permian had their run, and that's what people know the Permian Basin as. They don't necessarily think of Balmeray. They don't necessarily yeah. think of the fourteen game or the fourteen consecutive district championships by Borden County. What they think about is the big school teams that had their heydays back in the seventies, back in the eighties, you know, that, that entire legacy that happened. Um, so it's definitely a thing of the past. We know that, but is there the potential to have the future? And I think as of recent, it's been Midland legacy. A coach Clint Hartman will, will text Tepper yep. every single time and say the Rebs are back baby. And I think that, <laughs> He sends that every time because he truly believes that. He thinks that there is the possibility for them to get back in the mix. And you look at what they did last year, and they, they will go up in 6A Division One, almost guaranteed every single t every right. single year. But Midland Legacy, they lost to South Lake Carroll in, in the um, area round. They played El Paso Pebble Hills and by district, a very good Pebble Hills team. But that's the biggest issue is it is – 
almost undoubtedly guaranteed, it, it is guaranteed, that in the area around, they're going to end up facing off against some DFW school. And as of right now, the draws that they've got, the way that the districts kind of line up, it's been incredibly hard to to do that because they're going to line up with District 4 and District 4, depending on where they finish, likely it's going to be District 4. And you have in that, you're going to get South Lake Carroll. That's just it. I don't think that there's any way that South Lake Carroll loses that district yeah. so if they finish in the top then that's where they're gonna that's where you're gonna, gonna be, yeah. end up you know and i mean they finished second last year uh permian was in there permian again played Euless trinity in the area round uh we were very excited for that game and that's when ollie gordon i believe absolutely just lit it up mm -hmm. and so that's just it. They they have to start getting over that hump. If they can do that, the issue is it doesn't get any easier. They're going to continue, continue, continue to hit DFW teams until realistically you get to the state semifinals. So even if you pull the upset over South Lake, if you pull the upset over a team like Trinity, which I don't think will be in that position come this year, but there will always be that looming presence of their will. If they made it back to a state championship, I think that anyone could look at it and say they're one of the teams that had the absolute toughest path too. Yeah. Has a lot of teams, as long as you win by district or as long as you win area, then the road gets a little bit easier, which right. is crazy, but it's kind of like, hey, here's the goal, make it past this, and you've got a clear shot to it. Right. This one is wall you have to knock down after wall you have to knock down, and that's just really stinking hard, man. Right. Well, I was going to say, too, Rankin has been dealt a hard hand of cards the past two years because back in 2020, they lost in the area round to Westbrook. No, yes, Westbrook. And mm -hmm. then the next year they lost in, was it by district, second round of the playoffs to Sterling City. So, like, so area again. Yeah. Right, area again. So like I said, or like you said, you you get through the by district, you mm -hmm. get through the area, and then it's easy. But how do you get through that how area? How do you exactly? How do you get through those first two? And that's – that's why it's just been difficult for one of these teams mm -hmm. to make it through that path. Well, and you add hard a lot of travel rounds. time into that, you know, and that's what they try to schedule some of those games, it seems like. But it's like, yeah, you add the travel and yeah. you want to talk about, OK, you say you get past South Lake Carroll. Then you're coming back and four or five days later, you're heading straight back out there to take on just another punch to the gut week in right. and week out. So. I'm not saying it's out of the realm of possibility, but I am saying in the scope of what DFW football is looking like right now, it is going to take one of the best teams of all time in, in my yep. I, in my eyes to be able to make it through that treacherous road because there is never a week in the playoffs other than maybe by district that you're going to find someone that we would look at and say, oh, they're pretty evenly matched or, oh, they're favored. You're not going to be favored in any of them. It's going yeah. to be underdog mentality for six rounds. Right, and it's just a, it's just based off of, you know, the bigger pool of players to pull mm -hmm. from. You know, I mean, there's just – there's a lot of big kids around the DFW or around the Houston area. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of – just a lot of different kind of talent out here, you know, and that's mm -hmm. hard because you – you just can't find that kind of talent in the Premier Basin region. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So what I'm saying is if you're looking to back a team in that area, go down to the smaller classifications yes. because they have all the chances in the world. Even Wink being, you know, to a Division 2, to a Division 1. Oh, I just had that. Uh to a division two that's that's something that i think could stand out you know you have that but really it's the six-man ball if you were interested mm -hmm. in backing the premium basin go down there get out to some six-man games and fall in love with it because the opportunity to end up in jerry world is there but it's there it's not necessarily in the 6a realm yeah. and that's just that's the fact of the matter right so, i think sorry <laughs> i and I, before i get off this point this is kind of a sidetrack note but 1a and 2a is a lot of fun because the talent level is a lot more even it's mm -hmm. spread out you know like you have these kids that you know you get a six three quarterback every once in a while in the 1a ranks right but for the most part everybody's the same size you know it's not a, it's not like 6a football where you have uh you've got arlington sam houston right mm -hmm. going up against south lake carroll South Lake Carroll's going to have bigger guys, right. right? That's just kind of how it is. They're both 6A, but when you get down to those smaller ranks, the, the, the level playing, it, it's a level playing field. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a lot more even. The talent's more spread out. Yes. So it's it's a lot of fun to watch. It so is. give it a shot. So there you go. Go back some small school football out there in the Permian Basin. Yeah.